It's so amazing you young kids are doing this TEDx conference as opposed to you know just fun entertainment shows. Give yourself a big round of applause. I'm so proud of you, Pilas. So proud of you. So proud of you. Just an information, we are not going to do a stand-up comedy show right now. I'm here to I'm here to give you some yawn, all right. This is TEDx conference. So my name is Alexander. Um, I used to be a software engineer. After about 15 years of uh, doing software engineering, like last year, I quit my job, quote unquote, I followed my heart, I quit my job to do the stand-up comedy full time. That's correct. Every time I tell this to people, I get the same response. One minute of silence. But people start asking tough questions after that, very interesting, strange questions after that. People are like, Alex, you could be a stand-up comedian, huh? Full-time stand-up comedian? Really? Are you that good? It is very strange, right? Because nobody has ever asked me that question in my previous job. Nobody has ever said, Alex, you are a software engineer, huh? Full-time software engineer? Really? Are you that good? That never happens, right? That never happens. And people also don't, don't trust my story. It's, it's, a, it's a story that people wouldn't trust. People are like, Alex, you are saying, you quit your software engineering job to do stand-up comedy? Day. Day. You quit your job or you lost your job? But it happens. But they have a point, you know. Because they have to join, uh, join the jobs and all that. But there is, they have a point. Very often in the industry, there is only a thin line between quitting your job and losing your job. It depends on who gets the news out first, you or your boss. I quit my job, by the way. But frankly, I'm going to admit here, you know, software engineering job was so, so, so difficult for me. At least, at least for me, it was not for me. Like after 15 years, I realized that, thank God for that. I was working 15 hours a day looking into my laptop. 15 hours a day, I was looking into my laptop. My life was only about me and my laptop. You now after a while, I was so depressed. I started looking for happiness and I asked people, people said, if you want happiness, take a break. Listen to your heart and follow your heart. I said, okay. I'm taking a break. I'm not going to touch my laptop for the next two days. No laptop. I sat alone. I listened to my heart. You know what my heart said? Laptop. 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 I said, oh my God, I'm destined to do this. So I was so worried. Every day I'm going to work, close my laptop and listen to my heart just to see whether it will say something else one of the days. I did that every day until I lost my job. Uh, until I quit my job. Until I quit my job. <laughs> anyway. So you guys are here to take up your first job. So I don't want to ruin your, I don't want to ruin your thoughts. I'm here to talk about my, I titled my talk as the art of following your heart. That's the title of the talk. I'm here to tell you not how to quit your job. I'm here to kind of share my, share my process or share the experience that I've gone through in the past few years on leaving something sort of so quote unquote stable and trying to follow my heart. I thought I'll pass on that little bit of information or little bit of that experience to you guys. It should be very useful to you. It should be very relevant to, to who are you are, whichever um, place you are in your career. The first question that I told you, when you're starting out something new, like Adi was talking about, right? When you're starting out something new, when you're following your heart, in other words, the very first question people ask you, are you that good? Are you going to be a software engineer? Are you that good? Right? Do you want to be a singer? You sing like SPB? Immediately people compare you with people out there, right? Are you that good? And my brothers and sisters, please make a note of it. When you are starting out something new, why do you have to be that, that good? How can you be that good? When you are starting out something new, how can you be that good at all? It is, isn't it so clear that when you start doing something often, when you are putting your heart and soul into something, when you do that something repeatedly for some time, you are going to become good at it, right? So it's not the question, whenever people ask you, are you that good? Always remember to ask you a question, are you that passionate? I think that is the only question that is relevant. It's not the question of, are you that good? It's the question of, are you that passionate? If you are passionate, everything else is up to you. Right? And people ask you the next question, whom do you want to be? And that's again, I think, is a horrible question if you ask me. 
Do you want to be Rahman? You want to be Sachin Tendulkar? You want to be SPB? Or you want to be um, Satya Nadella? You want to be Sundar Pichai? The whom do you want to be? I think such a bad question in my humble opinion. Right? How can you follow your heart and be somebody else? Right? Please do think about it. And the world often kind of tells you that you have to be the best. And I think, I think that's where we start losing out on things, right? You don't have to be the best. You have to be, I think, your best. You have to be your best. And believe it or not, when you are being your best, very often it will be better than the best. Like Adi is one good example. I don't think anybody hired saying, Sir, we are looking at... We are looking for hip hop singers. I don't think anybody was looking for a hip hop singer. Right? So be your best. And never ever answer that question, whom do you want to be? Of course, you should take inspiration from anybody and everybody there. It's not the question, whom do you want to be? It is always that question, that fundamental question, what do you want to be? What do you want to do on a daily basis? What are you happy doing every day? I think that is the question that relevant. That is relevant today. And having said all that, right, right now, this is a beautiful time. This is a beautiful time in the world, right? This is a time of plenty. Like when I was in college, when I was in college school, right? In every field, especially in the art field, there are these people who are super achievers. They are the people who are there. If you take singers, there are few singers. If you take comedians, there are few comedians. If you take heroes, there are few heroes out there. If you take music directors, there are few out there. Then we then the, all the mere mortals at the end of bottom of it. In between, there isn't anything that was happening. Right? There wasn't much happening at least. Right now, the whole world has opened up. The world has come together. The time of plenty is right now happening in front of you. So in between, in between the way top and in between the mere mortals there, there's so much of opportunity has now opened up. Right? Whatever you want to be, whatever you want to do, the opportunity is out there waiting for you. I can tell you that. Just jump in and grab that opportunity. And if there is no opportunity for you, hey, that's an opportunity for you to create that opportunity like Adi did. There wasn't anybody looking for a hip hop singer in Tamil. He had to go create that and he did the favor for himself as well as he has created that space for his community, for the community that we all sit and sit back and enjoy. So time of plenty is right now happening right here. Just grab that. And always there is a pitfall to that, right? There is always a downside to that. There is something to watch out. Time of plenty doesn't mean time of plenty doesn't mean there is enough space for everybody, right? There is only space for people who are passionate about what you want to do. There are plenty, there are plenty of people out there in every place just being there because there is space. And that is, I think software engineering is a very good example. There are really good software engineering jobs waiting. At the same time, there are a lot of software engineers with degrees looking, still looking for jobs. It is not because people, people assume that, oh, there is, this is a time of plenty, there is space out there. People get in there just because there is space, but they don't want to work. It is not their passion, it's not their calling. They are not putting their heart and soul every day, right? And at the end of the day, there is a big question, how can you make money out of it? Right? I was selling CKSR the last time, right? These days I perform in a lot of pubs in the city. Every time I perform in a pub, they give me a free drink and a free order of peanuts. Right? Since I don't drink, I go for extra peanuts. No drink, extra peanuts. In other words, I am literally working for peanuts guys these days. Right? So the biggest question is, how can you make money out of what you are passionate about? Right? And I think time of plenty again. This is the time, if you are good at something, even if you are reasonably good at something, there are people out there who will pay you money. And if you are really good at something, people will take care of marketing the stuff for you. You put your stuff out there, people will do the sharing for you. The time of plenty. The money is out there. So I'll give you an example. There is this very humble man called Guna in my neighborhood. Right? I've been watching him for 10 years. He can't read, he can't write. 10 years ago, people offered him the car cleaning job in my neighborhood. Like people call, called him, Guna, please clean my car. And very soon, he was known as the best cleaner. Nobody cleans the car like Guna. That was the name he got. 
and very soon people called Guna into their houses. Hey, please clean my flat. And very soon Guna got his name. Right? Nobody cleans the house like Guna. Right now, 10 years later, right? Guna is in amazing demand for anything and everything because he, whatever he does, he does it really well. And he asks for a lot of money and people don't complain. He asks for a lot of money and people pay more than what he's asking for. Be that guna, I think. Like choose what you want to do. And the rest of it is work, 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 work. And we are trying to choose. We are trying to choose here. We are, we are talking about following your heart so that you can work hard. So that working hard becomes a lot of fun. So that working hard becomes like a workout, right? After a workout, you feel good, you feel stronger. That is exactly what we are talking about here. And when you say following your, follow your heart, there is always this misleading craziness associated with it. Like people say, Matcha, I am going to be Adi. I am not studying tomorrow. I am not coming anywhere. I am going to be the next Adi. I am working on my hip hop. Come on. Have a little balance, you know. Strike a little balance. Be responsible. Be responsible. You have to say, when I quit my job last year, my first son was going into class one. My second son was just getting into LKG. Just got the admission. I have a family to run. So how do you, I don't want to, you know, shake away from the responsibility. I want to carry that responsibility. I want my support system to come with me. I want my family to come with me. I want my friends to come with me. So be that responsible person when you are following your heart. How do you be responsible with this? It's a matter of planning and prioritization, I think. Right? We planned for a few years saved up some money so that I can do this for next two years and within the two years I can figure out how to sustain myself. So keep your passion alive deep inside you. You might be placed in TCS, TCS, I'm not saying TCS is not a, not a great place, just have a kick-ass jab, kick-ass, have a good time there, you know, do a good job there, work hard there, but keep your passion alive, keep who you are deep, you know, nice and alive deep inside you, that's what I'm trying to say. And finally, I will leave you with this thought, right? When you are on your own, when you are following your heart, collaboration is such a key. Yes, there is so much competition out there. This is a competitive world. But I think it is really, really secondary. The first thing out there is collaboration. Find your team. Like Adi is, cre Adi is just talking about, he has created that space where independent musicians can come in and sing and like explore and put in their talent out there in the world. So he's, he's creating that environment. So create, see whether you can create that team. And see whether you can join a place which has that ambience for you. So be a nice guy, right? That's what I'm trying to say. Be a nice guy. See what you are giving to. Like don't be so focused on following your heart, following your heart. Create that space. Throw that thing out there and give, give what you have to people. Then automatically stuff comes to you. And I'll leave you this final thought. That, you know, so when you're, when you're out there trying to follow your heart, there is definitely, the world is out there judging you every minute. Are you making progress? Are you making the money? When are you coming back to your regular job? How long are you going to be there? Is this going to work out? That's definitely there. And that's where I think you need something to keep you grounded. You definitely, all of us need, we are all humans, and we all need something to keep us all grounded. We need something where we can draw some strength from. We need something where we can keep ourselves balanced, you know. Quite often we have to balance, we have to balance what our heart needs versus what our mind tells. We have to balance what you want to do versus what your community needs. So it's a balance that's very important and you have to be flexible. Quite often you try to do something, things doesn't happen for you, you got to be patient. You got to be flexible, hang in there. My source of strength comes from yoga. I think yoga has some amazing wisdom of not just for the body, but for the mind too. That's where I draw my strength. That's why I draw my sense of balance. So I draw my sense of flexibility. So keep your passion alive. You know, follow your heart. But be sensible. And this is a time of plenty. This is a time of opportunities. And be responsible too. And hang in there. Good things will happen. Take care, fellas. Thank you.